Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, we are going to look at self-evolving agents. You would have been working with AI agents or in the field of agents. And now we have moved from AI agents to agentic AI, right? But, you know, lately we have seen there is a, there's a new technique that has been originated that basically, uh, you know, we call self-evolving agent or self improving agents i already have a couple of videos that i created earlier on you know self improving agents where agents improve by itself or agents evolve by itself and how it all happens of course through feedbacks right that's what we're going to look into this video so if you look at here on my screen i have this self evolving agents user interface that i have built it for you now everything will be open source this entire projects, the backend APIs, the notebooks, the documents, everything will be available on my GitHub repository. Let's click on initialize agent. The moment I click on initialize agent, you will see this self evolving agents AI that improves itself because it's very important uh, you know, to uh, evolve or improve the agent by itself because we collect so much of feedback uh, as feedback data, right? Or there's so much of feedback that agents can look, uh, look up to and they can improve by themselves. Now, before we go into it, look at an architecture here. So I've created different architectures to explain this. Now, this is a flow architecture where you have an input task, you will have an agent system. Uh, that will basically be orchestrated through some frameworks like Langraph, Crew AI, Pedantic AI, so on and so forth. Then we have a prompt manager. Now in this prompt manager, that basically execute with current prompt, the prompt that we currently have, right? Because you know, in in most of the scenarios, prompt that is working today for your agents might not work in near future. You know, after a multiple uh, you know workflows run or iterations, right? So that's important to keep in mind. That's where we know earlier in machine learning, we used to call data drift, right? You know, you have agent drift as well, right? You still have model drifting with LLMs and agent drifting because you have collecting so much of context in your vector database, your memory systems, and you start polluting the context. So that is important to keep in mind that agents can also drift over a period of time. So we have a prompt manager, execute with current prompt, and that basically generate an output. You have a task, you have written a set of instructions through a prompt. When you run that, it, the agent workflows run and it generate an output. Now, once it generate the output, we have a multi-criteria evaluator that is important. That basically looks at this four thing. Relevance check, that how relevant the output is. Of course, you, have, you will have your retrievals and whatnot, right? Then quality check, how good the quality of output is. Completeness check if the output is complete or the task has performed, the length check. Now, if your score is greater than equals target, then they return the final output. Uh, if else logic. No, then we do the meta prompting, meta prompt agent. Now we have to, of course, you know, change the prompt over a period of time and then improve the output. You can see generate improved prompt, update the prompt version. So this prompt manager that you see it over here. Now this prompt manager, you can look at here this prompt manager.py file that I have. You can see here we have, uh, of course, uh, we are using Pedantic. So Pedantic is being used for data validation that you see here. We have a class prompt version. It stores a single version of a prompt with metadata. It has a version, it has a prompt, it has a model, which are all string. Timestamp, of course, which is a date time for each prompt, there will be timestamp and some metadata. Now, in this modular class prompt manager, we, you know, if you look at here, it says, manages versioning and evolution of prompts, tracks all prompt versions with timestamps and metadata. That's what you're gonna do, meta prompting, right? Now, here I have been using GPT-40 mini. You, you can use any models you want, right? Let's say you wanna use Gemini 3, Claude 4.5, etc. feel free to do that. You can look at here, we have initialize with version zero, the first version, and that's what it does here. Uh, this function gets the current active prompt version. Then we have a function to update the prompt that you see it over here, prompt version, add a new prompt, basically a list that looking at the uh, version over here, you can see new version, we use the new version and we append the new version. That's what we are doing. If we are appending the new version in that list, right? And then get the version that basically retrieves a specific version that gets all the version. 
and roll back to a previous version. So here in this prompt manager, so we have a prompt manager. In this prompt manager, basically handles all your versioning of prompts. The up, uh, app, uh, you know, we are appending the prompt and what that happens over here, right? So this is your system architecture flow architecture. In within system architecture, we have this flow architecture. Now we have a sequence flow. The sequence flow is also, you know, you have an user, submit task agent, the loop will be there, evaluator and meta prompting. How it works, everything has been defined over here. You can see the key components, there are four key components. One is agent system, that is basically your orchestration layer, you know, that core execution engine that, you know, that processes tasks using the current prompt configuration and generate output based on the input or set of instructions that we will have. No, uh, when we are writing the code, right? Prompt manager maintains version controls of all prompts that I just shown you. Track changes and enables rollback to previous versions when needed. Then we have multi-criteria evaluator that assesses output quality across multiple dimensions, relevance, quality, coherence, completeness, length, whatever you call it, all the properties you know around that output. That's what it is. Then we have meta prompt agent. That is, is, is a specialized agent, by the way, that analyzes feedback and generates improved prompts to address weaknesses in performance. The feedback loop is important. And see, everybody, you know, when they build this agentic workflows, they all use some kind of observability tools like Opaque or Langfuse or Arizi AI, Phoenix, Giscard, Agent Ops, and thousands of other. But what do you do with that feedback? You don't do anything. We don't fine tune. We don't align the agents and not, we do nothing, right? So keep that in mind. The feedback data that you collect, the feedback data is extremely valuable, guys, right? So that, that you have to keep in mind. You can look at here. Initial execution, agent processes the task using current prompt. Evaluation output is scored across multiple criteria. You have a decision point. If a score meets target, the process is completed. Otherwise, it improves through meta prompt agent that generates better prompt based on feedback and iteration. Process repeats with improved prompt until target is reached. That's what it is, right? It goes into a reflection loop kind of a thing. Not exactly a reflection, which is a bit different concept, but very how very much similar exactly. Look at the task executor here, right? This is how an interface looks like currently. Uh, before I go into this task executor and show you the live demo, I want to give a walkthrough of this code because this is a very technical topic, self-evolving, so I want to show you that. Now, here we have, this is how the folder structure looks like. We have a backend folder for all our backend code, and then we have a frontend folder for our React-based frontend application. .env, we have our OpenAI API key because I have I'm using GPT-40 Mini. Now we have a git ignore because we are going to push this code on GitHub. So we don't want to ignore all the VNVs and ENVs and whatnot. This is also a notebook. Let's say if you want to run a notebook, you can also use this notebook. It's a complete guide for self-evolving AI agents. And then we have a script file that basically helps you run the scripts. Uh, and I start the applications end to end and stop the applications from installment, from installing the dependencies to running the code, everything. Now, in the backend, this is how it looks like. For backend, we have used UV, not pip. So UV is a Python dependency manager, which is faster than uh, pip. So we have used UV. When you get this project, go to backend and just do UV sync. You know, you will have that in readme. It will set up your backend. Now, if you look at the backend, we have an SRC folder, the source folder, where we have these files. You know, we have an init file. We have an agent.py. We have an evaluator. Let, let's look at agent.py. Now, agent.py, we are using async OpenAI from OpenAI to use this. And then we use two things, prompt manager that I already have shown and then evaluator. So from evaluator, we are using a multi-criteria evaluator. So relevance, how relevant is the output to the input? Quality, overall quality and coherence, how coherent the texts are. Completeness, does it address all aspects? And length, appropriate length, not too short, long, etc. Now here we have our async function for evaluations that you see, it says evaluate output against multiple criteria. Here we run all our evaluators that you see, evaluate relevance, evaluate quality, evaluate completeness. We aggregate the result into a dictionary and then just show it out. That's what we do. Here are some of the logics that we have. How do we do it? You can look at the logics over here. You can go through it. 
all the logics rate the quality because most of the time you know when you work in this field you are working like you are working with llm as a judge concept that's what we do we use llm itself to kind of grade and rate it so that's what we are doing here in the evaluator now when we come back to agent.py let's look at here we are using gpt4 or mini very simple system prompt you are a helpful assistant some uh, inference parameters like temperature and max tokens now in the self evolving agent you can see it says self evolving agent that improves through feedback loops this is the architecture i already have explained over here uh, you know you can look at all the functions that we have been using use meta prompting to generate an improved prompt the feedback summary everything is over here you can see the meta prompt is also very simple you can you know enhance this further you are a prompt optimization expert your task is to improve a system prompt based on performance feedback right and you can see this is how we pass the evaluation result average scores overall pass the detailed feedback and everything and we have given some set of instructions and then we get the output over here that you see now execute with evolution so once we have the new prompt we'll again execute with that uh, you know for the same task or queries that you have and everything is passed very self explanatory guys the agent.py file well commented as well uh, that you see and then we have our main.py where we just have a fast api based uh, backend so let me show you that fast api based backend over here this is we have all our backend so let's say you are working for a startup or you are working for an enterprise or even you are a researcher or or you are in academics let's say you are not happy with this user interface you don't want to use this user interface that i built it for a demo to show you show it to you you can just use this backend apis in a mobile application or you know in any kind of other applications or estimate applications whatever we have been building so that's what it is this is how our backend looks like so this is backend you know in pyproject.2ml we have all our dependencies when you do uv sync it automatically does everything for you so this is what the backend is then we have front end front end it's pretty much react i'm not going into front end it's not a javascript channel to watch okay so i'll just skip this this is the notebook notebook is also pretty much explanatory you can go and uh, use this notebook uh, similar thing is over there as well you can see the multi criteria and everything is over there now if we come back here there are two examples we have so you can look at here it says load summary example load email example so you can see it says write a professional email based on the following requirements that is my task very simple task description you can bring your own tasks over here then we have an input text i need to decline a job offer from tech solutions for blah 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 for a senior developer position i want to be polite express gratitude and keep the door open for future opportunities now i want my agent to kind of create a professional email right for below now max iterations is 3 so you can also you have to mandatory you have to set a max iteration because you will not want your agent to go into some kind of infinite loop because then your token cost will suit and you will become a bankrupt guy don't do that so we have a max iterations which is 3 over here it says number of self improvement cycles allowed so i have 3 let's say i make it 2 so i'll just make it 2 over here then we have a target score higher equals triggers more evolution agent evolves only if his score is below this threshold so i have put that self explanatory thing over here since they are very simple examples you cannot expect that it's always going to evolve for these kind of simple queries i just wanted to bring you this concept or this you know this technique to you so you can understand this that's for the uh, overall idea right so when you execute task okay if you come back over here you can see it's uh, running our tasks uh you know you can follow that into your terminal that what's happening and uh, whatever is there you have to keep in mind guys that for these kind of simple queries agent will get that uh, response or output really well in even first iteration i even not even not even iteration so just you know give you the output in the first go as itself because uh, the models are so good nowadays right but when you are solving some complex problem that's where the problem will uh, you know will will arise so this is where we are running our backend and front end the backend runs on port 8000 and the front end run on port 3000 now you can look at the task here it says iterations 2 and is scored so two iterations for this look at here the iterations 2 now it shows the final output is a two iterations and the score is 0.825 because if you look at the score over here 0.8 not right higher equals triggers more evolution score so agent evolves so it has evolved the iteration 1 right it have evolved two iterations to the confidence score now 
there are two iterations to get this output. So agent has learned from the first iteration that, okay, the email might not be good. So I'll just evolve. Now, if you look at here, it says final output subject. Thank you for the opportunity. We have your hiring managers, blah, blah, blah. I hope this message finds you well because you have to decline this offer. You can see it over here. After careful consideration, I have decided to decline the offer. This was not an easy decision as I was very impressed by the culture and all that formalities uh, or jargons that we talk to HR. Now, if you look at here, this is how the, the thing has evolved. You know, if you look at the score evolution, the evolution progress, you can find it out over here, right? Pass needs improvement and target score. Fantastic, guys. Like we also have a, like we have using Seaborn and Matplotlib. Maybe you can use Plotly, Express or D3 for JavaScript just to get a more interactive chart. Now you can look at the iteration history here, right? Uh, relevance, quality, completeness, length. We have the output, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the things that we have. Uh, you can find it out over here, blah, blah, blah. It's good, man. This looks really good. So this is what, you know, I wanted to show you guys. You know, we have this uh, prompt evaluation. The prompt evaluation also changed. The prompt evolution, not evaluations, by the way, my mistake. If you look at the system prompt, it also improved uh, from that, that one to the next one, uh, version 0 to version 1. It also has evolved, right? So this is how it evolves. Your prompt, not only you're looking at the... Uh, traces in all these tracing or observability tools or whatever you use and say, all right, I'll just do the retrievals or I'll just, you know, change the uh, model. No, you have to start from the prompt to the context. So the entire gaga about the context engineering where everything is, in, you know, involved, you know, your prompt, your output, your verbose, your logs, your reasoning, thinking, everything. So how do you, how do you take care of all of these together, you know, to make the agent self evolve or improve by itself that's the idea behind it right so you can see how how beautifully it has evolved and learned from it and got a better output over here you know in this one so this is what i wanted to show you guys the self evolving agents the fundamental is very clear clear right you have this uh, meta prompt agent when the when the out the first initial output is not good and the it's not satisfied you know it will generate the prompt it will create a new version of prompt or whatever is there it's not only prompt guys you can bring the entire context logic over here let's say if you're using lang graph you'll be storing all the short term memory into a scratch pad and if you are using some memory systems like mem0 or super memory or whatever you can have that for long memory and you can bring all of those logic over here so it removes the polluted thing from the context the polluted memory or whatever and combine that with this meta prompt agent logic and improve the context as well not only the prompt so keep this in mind i leave up to you to decide how do you want to build it now this this entire project will be available on my GitHub repository completely in free. Uh, you know, that's what that's what I do on my YouTube channel. Right? I build these new concepts. I bring, I read a lot. I read a lot of research papers and all those things. So this will be available for you. If you want to learn, you know, agentic AI uh, faster through a very structured and a process driven manner, look at this toolkit that I have created. I will give the link in description. Get this toolkit, which has a lot of good frameworks, roadmaps, and some workflows for you to kind of get it, uh, get it through this entire journey of learning. And if you also want to buy already built projects, SaaS project in you know, powered by AI agents, I'll also give the link of that bundle as well in this video description. So that's what it is. Now, if you have any question, thoughts or feedbacks about this particular topic or any other topics in general, uh, you can comment it down. You can also reach out to me through my social media channels. Find those information on channel banner and channel about us. If you like this video, please hit the like icon. And please subscribe the channel, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, right? Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.